All right, good to see everybody. Um, obviously, this is a huge week for us. Uh, you know, coming off the bye, the win at Hawaii was great. Uh, it was great for our team. It's great for us to get the, you know, to maintain possession of the Dick Tomey Legacy Trophy. That's special, certainly special to me. Um, but it's, it's become special to our team too. So, you know, there's enough. There's a handful of guys that still remember when he came and talked to them in uh, 2000. I think it was 18 was when he uh, spoke to us. Uh, it was just classic Coach Tommy. So, um, and and then you know we had a you know good bye and, and obviously shifting gears to an extremely good Fresno State team. Right, they're ranked. They've they've won it last year. They won 11 games the year before. They're super good. Uh, they're extremely well coached. They have veteran players everywhere that have played a ton of football. Um, and so this is a, a huge challenge for us. Um, I have a ton of respect for Jeff Tedford and the coaching staff there and the program as a whole. And, um, you know, we've had some, some, some real battles with them. And then also, you know, we th they've also gotten after us at the time. So um, huge challenge just trying to get our guys, uh, you know, um, coming out of the bye, getting back to work. And that's been really positive. And so that's where we're at right now. Coach, uh, you've been a guy who's watched the San Jose State Fresno State rivalry for a long time. You've coached in it. Um, is there a common thread between Fresno State, State teams, regardless of coach, regardless of administrator? Is this a common thread that you see that you always have to prepare for? Well, like I said a minute ago, like I have a lot of respect for them. They've won a lot of football games over time. You know what I mean? If you look back over their record over the last 40 years, I mean, even the last like 20, 25 years, right? I think they have like seven losing seasons or five losing seasons in that time. Um, so in that way, I really respect it, right? It's a, um, it's an institution and a fan base that's really committed, and um, in an area where they're the only show in town. So, you know, you go there and they have great crowds on game day and, and, and all that stuff. And and they've done a good job recruiting to that situation there. And so, like I said, I have a ton of respect for them. They have an awesome program, and and I think as another CSU. You know, that we're aspiring to be someone that is consistently good like they are. Staying off that question, Jeff Tedford, nice guy. Just what he's doing is just incredible. Two almost championships, maybe on the cusp of third. Uh, I kind of see him as a, maybe another Rocky Long or maybe a. Yeah. I mean, just personally, I mean, what, what's your view of his secret? Yeah, no, I, I don't. I wish he'd tell me the secret. You know what I mean? Um, I have tremendous respect for Jeff and just like professionally as a. As a you know, younger head coach. I guess I'm not young anymore, but uh, head coach, um, Coach Tedford's been great to me. You know, I, I knew him when I was an assistant. Uh, you know, over my career, and he was at Cal. Even when he was at Cal, and I was here, and then he was at Cal, and I was at Oregon State, and uh, I've always had tremendous respect for him. And his teams have always been good. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I think he's the winningest coach ever at Cal, right? You know, what I mean, like the guy's been good everywhere he's been. And so you got to respect that. You know, like you got to respect that. Um, and so I just, you know, I'm fortunate for uh, the friendship I have with Coach Tedford, but obviously this is a big game for both of us. And so, you know, we won't talk this week. Uh, what do you remember from Coach Tomei after the 2006 one against Fresno State in the locker room or afterwards? Um, that's when Coach Hill was there, who's another great coach. Um, uh, you know, that was a big win for us because I think, I'm not sure that, I think it maybe been. 15 years, right? Since yeah. we'd beaten Fresno, it'd been a long, it'd been a long time. You know what I mean? Like since like Garcia and those guys, right? Yeah, since yeah. I think actually we're, we're honoring that that 1990 team uh, this weekend at the game. Um, that team that won 10 games with uh, Terry Shea and, and that whole group, which will be pretty cool. Um, it's always great to have former players come back, and so that'll be pretty neat. But um, uh, I just remember, uh, you know, that that was a special team and. Uh, and, you know, when we took over here with Coach Tomey, um, you know, just trying to put the pieces together. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate because Coach Hill, had, Fitz Hill had left some good players here. And so you know, a lot of those guys were, were guys that he recruited, Adam Trafalis and James Jones and Giannis Davis and John Broussard and, you know, a lot of good players, you know. And so um, I just said all off offensive guys because I was on the offensive side. But um, I just remember it being a great day. It was Thanksgiving weekend. You know, it was a day game here. Um, you know, we had, we had a lot of there's a lot of fans here. We lot of, had a lot of students here. Um, I remember the students like rushing the field because it'd been so long since we'd beaten Fresno. So um, that's kind of how I remember it. And then 
since then, the rivalry's kind of had its ups and downs of just yep. not being able to maintain this like amazing thing. How yeah. important is that winning that this year for this to feel like a legitimate rivalry? No, I agree. You know, the coach told me he used to say that all the time. You know, it's not a rivalry if like it's so one-sided. And right now, this thing's one-sided. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, that's up to us to play better football and in, in these games and, and give us a chance to win them. So, um, but um, we know it'll be tough. We know they're the super veteran group on both sides of the ball. You know, they've got good players at all the positions. Their O and D line is a bunch of guys that have played four or five, six years of football. You know, it's just you're playing a veteran group, and that's what it is. Oh, uh, Coach, you're coming off a, a bye week, and Fresno State themselves are coming off a pretty tough matchup. Um, since you guys were on, like, a hot streak, how do you kind of keep the momentum going heading into this matchup? It's hard. You know, I think, I think the biggest thing is just really about, you know, focusing on one day at a time. I know that sounds cliche, but that's where we have to live. Um, it's just like worrying about this meeting or this practice or this rep, you know, that gives us a chance to play better football. Um, the, you know, the bye week was, the timing was good because we were coming off of, you know, that the Hawaii trip's a tough trip. You know, like you get back, I think I walked into my house at 9.30, you know, 10 a.m. the next day, you know, so like that, the players have that, all that, you know, so normally you're like, you do that and then you're getting ready to play a game, you know, which is always super tough because you end up, you play the game there at 6 p.m. Uh, Hawaii time, right, which is 9 p.m. here. Right? So it's just a different game. Um, so, um, you know, that, that part of it. But um, I, 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 think, I think this team really cares about each other. I think they like to work. And so that's been real positive is that the, po the work has been, uh, you know, really, really good they, last week and this week. And then uh, they had a little bit of downtime, a little bit, did a little bit of recruiting, and then, uh, you know, kind of back at it on Sunday. So um, just trying to keep them focused on right now. And, you know, what we need to do to play good football in this moment. Coach, uh, Kyrie has 13 touchdowns on the season. He's two away from breaking, for, or from tying the record uh, for single season rushing touchdowns. What's it been like to just kind of see him develop from where he was as a freshman and then kind of see him where he is now as almost as a record breaking player? Well, he, he scored touchdowns as a freshman, you know, like he's, he's done a good job of always having kind of a nose for the end zone. Um, but it's, it's cool, right? I, I think that's, you know, one of the things, and, and I think it's going to be harder now. Right, because um, you know, transfer portal, NIL, like all that stuff. You know, I don't think you're going to see as many fourth and fifth year and sixth year players at, at, at universities. I think that's just kind of the way it is. You know, which I think is sad, right? Because um, part of his ability to like kind of continue to improve is sticking to the process, the same system. You know, working really hard, like doing all the right stuff. You know, and so then you see. You know this really good product at the end. You know, and, and I'll be interested. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how much you'll see that in college football anymore, just with the way the world is going. This deep in the season with both teams that's come into Saturday, uh, a lot of tape, a lot of you know who you are is who you are right now. Right. Um, just general expectations. I mean, it should, it I think it's going to be a great game. You know, I'm expecting us to have a great crowd. We've had really good crowds this season, which has been awesome. Um, you know, we haven't played at home for a couple couple of weeks since uh, Utah State and so I'm excited about that I think and then Fresno always brings a good crowd too you know so I think it'll be awesome I think Sefke Stadium will be rocking on Saturday night we um, we haven't had a ton of night games this year you know I think we had a couple normally we have like all 7 p.m. 7 30 p.m. kicks you know and, and so um, I think it'll be good I think people will be excited to come out and, and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that they come out and, and create a a home field advantage for the Spartans, you know what I mean? And like, I hope our students show up, and they've been really great this year. Um, I hope our fans show up, you know what I mean? And I think, I think our our administration's done a great job of like continuing to improve kind of the game day experience at San Jose State, and uh, or in Sefke Stadium, um, which is important. And and uh, more and more people are having a good experience when they come, right? And I think that's uh, you've seen that with our attendance this year and. Um, obviously, the new building and what's what's in here, but just also you know how they're feeding people and how they're figuring out all the logistics of all those things. So, um, I'm optimistic it'll be a great crowd and a great environment for a college for for a really big important college football game. So, out of curiosity, can winning this game bode well for you guys when it comes to recruiting in the Central Valley, just because there's so much good talent there? Um, you know, I think uh, I mean maybe you know I, I think that's hard to project. Um, you know, we have a couple kids from Fresno on our team, or from that area on our team, and, and they have a handful of kids from the Bay too. You know what I mean? So, 
I think you know the biggest thing for us is doing doing a good job, doing a really good job locally, and and uh, you know that's always going to be our focus is we're going to start here in the Bay, and then kind of expand from there. Um, but um, you know I think I think ultimately players kind of end up where they belong. You know what I mean? Um, and it'll be exciting I think to recruit to this facility now that's actually here, and not just a, a dirt hill on the side of a, a stadium. You know that it's actually physically here and we can. Show people what it looks like and what it you know what it feels like in here. I think that'll be that'll be a cool thing. And then I think as we continue to uh, watch, I mean, there's so much happening in college football right now, right? Like, like what's going to happen? You know, conference expansion. You know, like, you know, how is that going to play out? What's that going to do to future schedules? You know, um, NIL. Like, how does that play out school to school? How much do rosters change? Um, you know, because you do or do not have NIL. You know, and so I think there's a lot going in college football, I don't think we've really, we're kind of just getting started with some of that stuff, and we don't really know how it's all going to look. Hey, Coach, just to kind of get back on the rivalry topic, is there that sense of rivalry within the players, or is that just more so like for the students and, and fans to? No, I think it is because, you know, you play for the Valley Trophy, and most of these young men know each other, right? Like, they all have played against each other high school, you know, most like a huge portion. They have more, a handful more out of state players than we do. But both of our rosters are heavily, you know, filled with California players. So they all, you know, so many of them played with or against each other in high school, you know, or junior college even. So there's a lot of carryover that way, you know. So I think that's why it feels that way. And I think also with the proximity of the two schools, you have lots of families, um, you know, where people went to both schools or, you know, that they, you know that that part of it. So that that seems to be a consistent, uh, you know, kind of uh, theme for families. Also, like, oh, you know, my my brother went to Fresno State, and my sister and I went to San Jose State, or whatever. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of like Oregon, Oregon State, in that way, a little bit, right? Like those schools are just 45 minutes apart, but uh, you get a feel of, of that a little bit with this game. Uh, just speaking of proximity, some news over the bye week I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Stanford is now on the schedule for yep. the next six seasons. You guys are going to yeah. start playing each other next year. Yep. I mean, what is, as a guy who's grew up in the Bay Area, what, what does that mean to you to kind of be able to play Stanford you know, on a year to year basis? Well, I think that's always a really big game. You know, I mean, that, that, there's just a ton of history between the two schools, and I think our fans have been begging for it for, for years. And I think it went away in like 12, maybe, was the last time we played. I think that seems right to me. Um, and so, um, you know, and I think that'll, that's going to be like another really tough game, right? Like, because we're going to play, you know, every year we're going to play a Power Five, another Power Five school, and now we just added Stanford, right? Who, if you're watching them right now, they're absolutely getting better. They're well coached, right? They just went on the road and beat Washington State, you know? So that's going to be another tough game, right? And, you know, at the start of the season. And so that'll be something that we will worry about 10 months from now. I think it was a 2018 game with Josh Love and the game against Fresno with the rain game. 19. And here? 2019, yeah, here. Here, yeah. And that was kind of, I think you said even before, it could be a hard winter moment, takes us the next season, and it did, yeah. I think, or it started to. Just your progress from there to now, I mean, just now things like, obviously the program's mature, and just your evolve, I mean, your evolution from that point to this point, in that sense. Well, I think... You know, you're always learning in this job, you know what I mean? And I think the interesting thing is that every year the team is different. You know, I think that sometimes when you talk to people, they're like, oh, you're in year seven, like, and you're like, yeah, but like, you know, like, we lost like six all-conference players in the defensive front, right? Two players of the year, like, we're different. No matter how you look at it, we're different than we were a year ago, you know what I mean? Kyle Harmon and Ali Matau and Cade and Junior and, Lando Gray and you know Noah Wright. I mean, it's like like some you know some high impact dudes in that group. You know, so um, you know that part of it. So it is it is a little bit year to year. I think I'm always trying to. I mean, that's a cool thing about I think the coaching profession is that like coaches like much more in this profession than others. Like there's nothing that's like proprietary, right? Like no one's like trying to hide their stuff like coaches help each other you know what I mean there's been situations where I've called coach Tedford about program stuff or big picture stuff and you know there's lots of people that that I can call that way and 
um, you know, and, and also with Coach Tedford and also Brady Hoke at San Diego State, like those guys being in the CSU, how is this working for you? This is, we're trying to do this, how's it working for you? And so that's kind of, um, you know, that's a really cool thing about this profession is that everybody, um, the guys that are in it for the right reasons, and I think most people are, it's about helping young men become men and also playing good football, right? Like those, like there's a, both those things kind of go together, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, coaches are teachers and mentors and leaders of young men. And, and so um, it's always valuable to have guys that you can call to to talk about, you know, managing the situation or what are you guys doing with this or how are you guys handling off season or what, you know, whatever, because you're always trying to build a better program. And so, um, you know, that, that part of it for me, God, 19, 2019 seems like a long time ago. You know what I mean? Um, but it goes fast.